idiot freaking gets a bow, shortens the draw length, lowers the poundage, just to find out what would happen if an adult shot a youth setup so your kids and ladies and newbies can learn how to bow hunt. This guy, Project Dick Dick. <laughs> it commences in just a bit. Stay tuned, baby. Sponsor for this one is not an archery person. It's Race for the Wounded. Those guys run Baja and stuff to help our veterans and people wounded in combat. Check them out, raceforthewounded.com. All right, this is something I've been wanting to do and Big Mike and I have been talking about. I just, I get a lot of emails and stuff about people with low draw, weight, low poundage, 12 year olds, ladies who are shooting 45 pounds. What do you think you should do? And I say, well, doesn't really change anything. <laughs> you still shoot a 550 or 650 grain arrow with a lot of FOC, with an adult broadhead, but you shorten up the distance and you make things practical for the situation you're in. Here we go. All right, here's the bow setup. This is a diamond by Bowtech. My son outgrew it. It's a fully adjustable, it's got the special little cams on it where you can actually adjust the draw length at your house with no bow press. Mike put new strings and cables on it for me and these little fuzzies to kind of quieten it down. We're shooting a biscuit. It's kind of ragged, like you would expect a kid to get, you know, they shoot a lot of arrows. I'm shooting the EZV because it's awesome. We've set it at 43 pounds at 26 inches. I'm shooting it just fine. I got to kind of get like this and it's been a, a little bit of an adjustment, but it's shooting pretty good. There are some particular things I want to discuss that we had just challenges with. This particular bow has always been a little grumpy and gripey. We've solved it. The, some of the settings may not agree with some of you guys in the archery shop, but I'm telling you what, we go through the same process I go through with every adult bow I play with. I ran Project Dick Dick through here. And by the way, you purpose, it's not Dick Dick. That's a little tiny antelope in Africa. They're little bitty guys. So we've got a little bitty bow. That's the name. All right, we're going to talk about the setup and the tuning process, which was annoying, just to be real serious. Yeah. So again, this project blossoms out of a bunch of emails and stuff. And I've had some ladies and stuff try some heavier arrows and had weird results hunting. And I don't think they're tuning a bunch of arrows. I think they're trying to tune one arrow. And I'll tell you why, because I've been through it. So Mike tuned three or four arrows. We cut down uh, some 400 spine cut down version out of the bin that I sent him to 26 inches. He got them flying pretty good. The arrow that came out to be the, the beast was a Kinetic Pierce 300. I'm not gonna go that route because I don't think a lot of you are gonna do that for your beginning bow hunters. I think you're gonna get inexpensive arrows. You may go get some of the, uh, this is the blackouts from Bass Pro. They're really expensive. They're, I think they're gold tips, but they're super inexpensive. Or just a basic hunter. You may have those laying around gold tip or beam an ICS. And you're gonna start, start them shooting and get them going. But it's important to have the bow tuned right. And I think people are starting with these light setups with a dick dick bow. And they say, okay, my arrow's fixed to a certain length and I'm gonna fix the point weight and I'm gonna try to tune it. And it won't. This bow would not for me. Mike got it shooting good, I didn't shoot it the same. So I had to play around with it, and I play around with a lot of stuff, and let me show you what that looks like. There's some guys trail riding in the background, so you're gonna have to deal with that, because I'm on a place where they trail riding and having fun. Okay, so it wasn't for lack of arrows. There's three different links, five different spines, and I shot field points from 125 with big inserts inside all the way up to 315 grand points. My goal is to have a high FOC arrow and I'm going to the first one I shoot is going to be an Ashby Street Legal Arrow. Over 650, FOC in the 20s, single bevel. It's not for lack of points. I got the 300s hiding up here, okay? This is a 200 grain ethics insert inside of a 300. You can see the mark. I insert tuned and knock tuned just like I do. 
So the cards are gonna pop up during the video. If you don't insert Noctune, I highly suggest it. Remember, I think your biggest problem with one of these little bows is you assume the charts are right and those people don't know a damn thing about anything, okay? It's just a guesstimate. This bow, for me, didn't shoot great <laughs> until I moved the rest all the way over. See that? It was in the middle. It was where it was supposed to be by ATA or whatever. I don't know about top hats and flipping your wing dingers. I don't have a bow press. I don't know any of that stuff. But it kept having this right, left tail kick and I couldn't get it out for me. One would shoot, one would shoot, none would kick. That's not good because with broadheads, remember I'm going back to if somebody else is, gets their proper draw length and everything, it needs to shoot perfect. You're already shooting a light poundage, low draw length setup. And if your arrows aren't flying good, you're asking for trouble. And I think that's what some of these people are doing. I think some of the subs out who've called me and said, hey, I tried your 550 grain arrow with a Magnus buzz cut or a Strickland's Helix or you know, you shot some other great broadhead and real good setup and I just plunked one in the side and it didn't do very good. Yeah, I think it's because you just used one arrow to tune. So that may be your expense and buy some 400s, 340s. Here's the funny part. The best shooting arrow so far has been a 400 spine gold tip, 28 and a half my draw length arrow with 100 grains of brass and anything up front. So the setups I'm going to shoot. For, I'm going to shoot this one first. This is this is actually a 300 spine, 28 and a half inch blackout Durant's Ferry wrap from Bass Pro Shops. This is the single bevel Bishop. It's a little outrageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I killed a pig with this. I, sh I mailed it to Mike. Mike killed a pig with this on video, and then he shot a telephone pole, or I shot a piece of metal or something, and we had to grind her down. So she's nice and narrow, slick, oh, and paper shaving sharp. My second setup will be a Velocity 400 with feathers and a wrap, buzz cut, two blade, and there's a 180 grain mansert behind the 100 grain insert. Both of these arrows are street legal, Ashby, bone breaking weight, bare shaft tuned, optimized for penetration, and optimized for durability. Those long inserts have so much glue and stuff on them, they're not gonna crumple. So let's talk about setting up your archer to succeed because it's critical. These heavier arrows are gonna, are, you know, out to 15 or 20, they get a little lopy. Understood, gotcha. We shouldn't be shooting that far. They're already shooting a moderately slow, short draw length and low poundage. Here comes what I think about the setup. Archery is a game of limits. If you want to shoot 150 yards, get a 270. I'm a firm believer in that, and I really don't think anybody should be bow hunting past 40. But that's my personal preference, and y'all can go worship all the freaking pros. I got no pros, and nobody sends me money. And every one of my YouTube videos is demonetized because I show dead animals, so I just turn off the monetization. So I got no skin in the game to tell you anything but what I believe. And I think you shouldn't be shooting past 40 bow hunting for 95% of the world. Okay, there are super people out there who can do that stuff. I'm not one of them and I don't play in the NFL either. Kind of the same thing. I'm gonna limit the shot on this one to under 20 and I'm gonna to try to get 15. So I have a local lab, that's where I am today near my house. And I've got a 15 yard shot out of a 15 foot tripod. It's gonna be standing right there. And a lot of you purists are gonna be like, that son of a gun's baiting them and he's a jackass because he's a guy. And I think he's an idiot. All right, that's good. If you want your freaking newbie to succeed, you need to set the deal up. You need to set the deal up. Come on, help them out. Preferably a tent. The place I'm hunting, the wind won't let me do that. Preferably a tent. Preferably 12 yards. Make it easier on them. I don't know what else to tell you. I would recommend two pins and a laser. I would set one at 15 and one at 20 and see what the gap looks like. I've zeroed the Easy V, this is another option, at 17 yards. At 20, it's about two inches low. At 15, it's a little bit high, like, you know, that. And the shot's gonna be baited in 15. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the animal where I want him. It's an example of what you should do for beginners. You should do that or tell them don't shoot past that whatever, X tree. And if a deer walks out there, tell them not to risk it. 
tell it, put them in the best possible situation to get an arrow hitting in the right spot. And then finally, not really going to quit on the heavy stuff. You're talking about, you can outrun the arrow coming out of this bow. It is hilarious when you turn it loose, but it is flying. When it shoots, I describe it as an old fashioned film. It just tick, 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 tick. it's beautiful, but it took a day and a half for me to figure that out. And I just slide the rest over to an unreasonable spot. But that bow shoots with my form and me crammed up, it shoots it. I don't really care about all other stuff because at ATA and all the measurements and using measure, using the freaking abacus to get it right, the arrows were kicking. I'm not doing it. If they're kicking, they're kicking. I don't know how else to tell you that. I slide the rest over where it shouldn't be and they, I mean, darts. I still can't get the short ones to shoot. That's key. I can shoot a 300 spine, 28 and a half, 29 inch, with three or 400 grains up front. I can shoot a 400, 340, 300. But the short arrows we originally cut off, intending to you know have a kid length arrow out of a kid length, I still can't make them fly. Except for the Pierce. <laughs> Those little skinny guys are humming. I still, I think we've got them with an adult arrow, you know, point on them. I think we got them in the mid 600s. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. First of all, you need to subscribe to my channel, hit like on this video, look for me on Instagram, look for me on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook that often, but I'm on Instagram occasionally. I only post things that matter. I'm not gonna repost a post of the repost. That makes me sick, I'm 50 years old. These young guys post some picture 18 freaking times just to keep themselves relevant. Okay, well, I'm okay with myself. But still, subscribe to this channel because here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to shoot the first arrow out of the box is going to be that single bevel 675 grain arrow. I'm going to shoot that one because Mike shot a pig with it. I shot a pig with it. I'm going to try to shoot one with Dick Dick with that, with that one. And then my next one will be Magnus Stinger Buzzcut. That's a head I highly recommend for a lot of people for beginners and new shooters. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. This is a reason to subscribe. What the Ranch Ferry does, I try to apply principles to help you become a better bow hunter, especially in the whitetail woods. Anything you see on my channel, you may think it's excessive, but you find a setup that does the stuff to pigs that we're doing, you get a deer in front of you, and if they bounce or jump the string, it's gonna break them, and you're gonna get your deer. Because I haven't received an email yet that said, I was hunting this two-year-old, the spike with milk on his lips, and I missed him. Every one of them starts out. It was the biggest deer of my life, and I bonked him, and he ran off, and he's gone. I'm telling you, you have a better chance shooting adult arrows. I'm not saying it's 100%, but I am telling you what, your freaking 420 grain flapper compared to a 600 grain forward loaded high FOC with a high integrity broadhead, you got a much better chance when things go wrong. When things go right, everything works. Unfortunately, there's wind and gravity and adrenaline and your heart rate and the animals move, stupid. Stay tuned.